Um. Lee Rodart Jr. is a convicted killer and former manager of the Bonefish Grill in Mandarin, Florida, where he murdered his co-worker Savannah Gold in 2017. He was found guilty of second-degree murder and sentenced to 40 years in prison in 2021. Like I said, I want to kind of go over some stuff. I know we talked the other day just for a few minutes and I had some concerns about a couple things. And, um, oh, okay, oh, there we go. Somebody else wants to talk. There we go. Um, I wanted to talk to you about Savannah. So I just had a couple of things that came up that I wanted to ask you about specifically that didn't didn't seem to line up. So I wanted to yes, come down and talk to you. Okay? Yep. All right? I, uh... Um, so uh, let's get a, just a couple. Just make sure I've got your basic information. It's Lee, and ha, tell me how you pronounce your last name. Rodarte. Rodarte. Okay, and that's R O D A R T E. Yeah. Right, and it's 1081 Halifax Road, Jacksonville. What's the zip there? Uh, three two two one six. Three two two one six. Okay. Uh, date of birth is eight eleven of eighty eight. Five eleven. Yeah. Okay. And what's your uh, approximate weight? Um, I just been a while since I weighed myself, but uh, probably about 163, something like that. 163? Okay. What color eyes do you have? Brown. Brown. Hair is? Brown. Brown. Um, and what's your phone number? 904. Okay. 452. 452. Yes, sir? 6094. 6094. Okay. Uh, and your social, do you know your social? And white male, what, how old are you? Um, 28. 28. And can you read and write? Yes. What's the last school you went to? Um, Forest High School. Oh, yeah. Before it was renamed. Yeah, yeah. When did you graduate from there? 06. Okay. 2006. All right. You can read and write. Have you had, um, uh, have you drank any alcohol today? Any drugs today? Um, I took in Adderall that my buddy gave me. Okay. Because yeah. I was there so late last night. I yeah, yeah. And I was super tired. Like, here, take this. Okay. Adderall? Yeah. And do you normally take that? No, I was, uh, I've taken one a long time ago. Like, okay. I wouldn't say high school, a little bit after high school, but it's been years. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but nothing to drink alcohol wise? No. Okay. And how about what time do you think you took Adderall? Uh, it was probably 12 ish. Like noon? Yeah. Okay. And do you understand what I'm saying though? Yeah. Being able to communicate, okay, enough. It didn't, you know, make no. it not be able to. Okay. Yeah. And no alcohol. You said you can read and write? Just perfect. Awesome. I uh, want to ask you some questions, but I want to go over your, your rights. We are currently at 501 East Bay Street, which is the police memorial building. Today is August the 5th, 2017, and it's approximately 7.15. Make sure I've got that. Yep. So it's at 7.15. Most of Lee Rodart Jr.'s early life is unknown. He was born in 1989 and by all accounts was an average American citizen. He worked at Bonefish Grill in Mandarin, Florida, in the Jacksonville area, acting as a manager and chef at the seafood casual eating chain. At the time of his crimes, he was 28 years old and had no history of violence. Rodart dated a woman named Chelsea for 12 years before the murder of Savannah Gold. His parents have not been named publicly, but his sister Amber Camarillo was sentenced to 20 years in prison for the murder of Raquel Wallace in 2018. After arguing over a car at a Super 8 motel, Camarillo was unable to control her temper and killed Wallace in a fit of rage. She was convicted of the crime and remains in prison to this day. PM, give or take. Um, can you, will you read that, just that top line to me? You have the following rights under the United States Constitution. Perfect. I'll read these with you and you can just kind of follow. Um, you do not have to make a statement or say anything. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before you make a statement or any questions are asked of you and to have the lawyer with you during any questioning. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to you before any questioning if you, if you wish. If you do answer questions, you also have the right to stop answering those questions at any time and consult with your attorney or with a lawyer. Do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. Okay, awesome. You just sign there that you understand that that isn't admitting or not saying anything, it's just saying you understand those rights. Okay. Perfect. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, Savannah, you said that you knew her and you guys had, um, you knew her from work. I mean, just kind of fill me in with that. How long have you known her? Um, like I said, I've known her obviously since you worked, since you started working there. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say probably about eight months ago yeah. or so, we started hanging out outside of work. 
Um, and at the time I had a girlfriend, um, but I kind of, you know, we kind of connected me and Savannah. So we hung out a little bit here and there, um, got pretty close. Uh, we come from, I guess, somewhat similar, um, backgrounds, I guess you should say. Okay. Um, you know, she didn't have it the best come growing up, neither did I. Uh, so we kind of connected and hung out for a little while. Uh, I'd probably say a period of two, three months. Okay. Um, and then she started using uh, drugs a lot. Okay. Now, I used them with her, uh, not the same drugs that she used all the time, um, but... I did them with her a couple times, and then she started to get heavy into them. And, oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, so I kind of just uh, tried to take a step back and, you know, put things off. Um, and after that, um, me and my ex started kind of chit-chatting again. Okay. Um, you know, and who's that? What's her name? Her name's Chelsea. Okay. Um, so we kind of started chit-chatting again, never really 100% because obviously, you know, she was still kind of upset about, uh, me hanging out with Savannah and stuff okay. like that. Um, and then probably a month or so ago, um, uh, I saw Savannah at work and she looked healthy again, you know, she gained a little bit of weight and, uh. Just, you know, friendly talk at work, you know, telling her, you know, hope everything's been good. And she told me, you know, that I guess she uh, did a lot of drugs and ended up in the hospital. She ended up missing, like, uh, I want to say a couple of days, three or four days from work. Oh, okay. Um, so, obviously, you know, me being pretty close to her, I was concerned and everything. But after she came back, you know, she looked good. And she ended up telling me that, I guess... Uh, you know, over those four days, she detoxed pretty well, and she kind of caught a, you know, new sense into why she shouldn't do so drugs so so much. Okay. Um, and like I said, she looked good, you know, she started looking healthy, so uh, we kind of were talking, you know, here and there. We hung out a couple times. Um, she came over to the house, and, you know, we just kicked back, drank a couple beers, watched movies, stuff like that. Okay. Um... And then as we hung out, you know, after a couple of times, she brought drugs over. Um, and I told her, I was like, you know, you're doing really good. You can't, you know, you shouldn't be doing it again. You're finally gaining weight. Because when we were together the first time, she was, you know, she got really petite and okay. just didn't look well, um, which is kind of why I took a step back. Plus, uh, on August 2nd, 2017, Savannah Gold arrived at Bonefish Grill dressed in her work uniform for her 5.30 shift. She parked her car outside in the parking lot, but instead of going in for work, security cameras revealed she got in the passenger seat of Lee Rodart Jr.'s parked car. Fifteen minutes later, a struggle unfolded inside of the car. She did not exit the vehicle, but Rodart got out and opened the driver's side door of Gold's car. He reached inside, then returned to his own vehicle and drove away. My father used a lot of drugs growing up. My mother used a lot of drugs growing up. Okay. And it was just kind of a hard thing to see, you know, every time that we hung out. Okay. Like I said, we did, you know, uh, we took, like, some pain pills here and there mm -hmm. on occasion. But then she started, like, bringing heroin over and stuff oh, like gotcha. that. And okay. That's, you know, uh, my mom was addicted to methamphetamines when she was, uh, when I was younger. So okay. the those hard, like, hard drugs just kind of scare me a little bit so that's why i took the step back the first time and then i felt like she was better you know as we hung out recently um and she brought drugs over to my house the last time that we hung out okay and uh we would text here and there i would ask her how she's doing you know hope her day's going good just because i told her when she left the last time that we hung out i was like you know you're doing really well stop doing this you know you can yeah. do it yeah no doubt um, and I heard that she just kept, you know, was doing the same thing. Okay. Um, so we text a couple of times and I ended up telling her, I was like, Hey, you know, uh, for one, I'm dealing with a lot of personal stuff 
myself right now as it is. You know, I'm a little depressed. Um, but I think we're moving too fast. I think we should, you know, stop talking. Okay. Um, and she said, I understand. It's completely fine. No problem, you know. Uh, she said, I'll delete your number. I'll never text you again. And I said the same. I was like, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, you know, try to jump back into things. I just, it, I think we moved too fast. Um, and I said I wouldn't text her either, just to, you know, kind of split yeah, mutual ways. Right, yeah. yeah. No worries. Okay. Um, and that was the last time that we texted. Okay. When was that? Uh, it was probably a couple, two or three weeks ago. Okay. Sometime in July. Right, right. Yeah, and I think that's one of the things you said was that was the last time that you had contact with her yes. as far as, I don't want to put words in your mouth, so, I mean, you, you correct me. That was the last time. time that I texted her. Yeah, text or a phone call or a messenger yeah. or anything like that. Two to three weeks ago. Yeah, okay. And um, and then the last time, when was the last time you saw her? This is what I was a bit... I didn't tell you the truth. When we talked, I felt fish. Okay. Last time I saw her was Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Um, I heard that she has been basically telling a lot of people at work that um, we hooked up a bunch, like a couple of days before that, yeah. and that she was going to like tell about the whole situation. You know, try to get me fired. And why like why would that get you fired? I, I, I well, don't, I don't I'm a manager and she's an employee. So okay, I mean, so you guys like, aren't supposed to fret. Yeah. Answer. Okay, I got you. And she just told um, uh, people, I guess, that she was out with that work at the restaurant that we were having sex. Okay. And, you know, hooking up and stuff like that. And that I was her boyfriend and this and that. Um, so I was a little upset. Obviously, you know, I care about my job. Sure. Um, How long have you been there now? Uh, I'll be five years in the summer. Okay. Yeah, right. Um, so I was a little upset. Um, so I met her in the parking lot uh, at Bonefish. When is this? Wednesday afternoon. Okay. Well, do you know what time or about? Um, it was about 5.30. Okay. When you say you met her, did she was she meeting you too? Or? Um... I didn't. Yeah, how, I didn't. I didn't call her. Okay. Um, I just drove up there to see if maybe she was working. I was okay. gonna, you know, talk to her. And um, did you as know I was, she was working that night? Um, I did. You did not. I did. Oh, you did. Yeah, okay, I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, you knew she was working that night. Yeah. Okay. So I drove up there and I was hoping to get a chance to talk to her. Okay. Um, I pulled in the parking lot. She pulled in um, a little bit after me. I parked, uh, and I said, "Hey." Uh, can I talk to you for a second? Um, and she said, yeah, what's up? And I was like, I heard you've been saying some things about me and you continuing to hang out and you know that we're boyfriend and girlfriend. And she, was, she asked me, she said, can I come sit in the car? Because I just did some heroin and I'm a little paranoid. Okay. I said, why are you doing that? You know, you're, doing really well, you shouldn't have been doing that. Okay. Um, and so she came and sat in the car, and I explained to her the situation. I told her that servers uh, at Bonefish were coming to me and telling me that you're telling people when you're out that we're still having sex, and we're boyfriend and girlfriend. And I said, I would appreciate, you know, I need you to stop. Because for one, it's jeopardizing my job. We agreed to, you know, split stop talking mutually and just move on mm -hmm. and you know be cordial or whatever um but it was nothing more than that and she said i'm gonna do what i want uh you can believe what you want i didn't tell anybody anything and i told her i said the girl that you were out with told chelsea that we were still having sex and that you were just at my house like yesterday and hanging out and the girl that she was out with when that savannah was out with a couple nights prior okay gotcha um i guess uh, at one of the bars okay in man and who was that fish the girl that yeah. she was with yeah. uh, her name was rachel rachel okay. yeah. and rachel told chelsea chelsea that savannah was saying that uh 
because me and Chelsea talk, you know, we're very, you know, friendly at work, you know, we joke back and forth. Okay. Uh -huh. um, and Savannah said, yeah, I did say that, you know, uh, I don't really like Chelsea, you know, and I said, well, look, you need to stop. Because, okay. for one, we, like I said, we agreed to go our separate ways. Mm -hmm. um, and it's jeopardizing my job, and it's making me really upset having to come into work, you know, or talk to Chelsea, and she just com constantly, you know, badger me about stuff that you're saying that isn't true. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I told her that she needs to stop. In an attempt to explain Gold's sudden disappearance, Rodart sent several texts to family members from Gold's phone in the hours after the struggle in his car. These texts sent to her father Daniel and brother Chris claimed that she had run away with a man to start a new life. These messages were riddled with misspellings and poor grammar. Gold's family immediately realized these texts were unlike their daughters, and when Gold was still missing hours after her shift was supposed to end, they reported this to police. Um, at that point, Okay. Um, and I said, no, stop. Like, I'm serious. I don't want to talk to you. It's not good for us. So let's stop. And she just said, why'd you do that? You know, I said, well, I'm upset. You know, and she said, fuck you. You know, you're a piece of shit. And I mm -hmm. said, she said, she's going to keep talking, you know, telling lies and stuff about me and everything like that and I said okay. and at that point uh, she had her phone in her hand she got out of the car and walked towards the main entrance with San Jose so like if um so this is like like uh, like I know bonefish is like over here this is San Jose this is the bank it's over here in this area mm -hmm. Um, where were you guys parked? She was parked here. Okay. Um, to the left of the Vice Star ATM. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I was parked here. Okay. All right. So um, you're you're like here. Yeah, I was. Uh, really I was probably three spaces away. Okay, from her so. car. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. So. And what do you drive? I drive a uh, Chevy Malibu. Okay, what color is it? Silver. Silver Chevy Malibu. Yeah. Does it have Colorado tags, Florida, Florida tags, tags, Georgia tag? Okay. And um, did you, when you got there, did you pull into the parking place? Did you park sideways? Did you park I backward? In. I backed in. Okay, you're backed in. Yeah. You backed into this parking place over by the bank area, um, by the Vistar uh, ATM. Yeah. And you're driving a silver Chevy Malibu with a Florida tag. Okay. And then she she pulls in. Over on this side of you? Yeah. Okay, so like if you're in the car and you're sitting here, she would be on your left. So you're the driver side. If I'm sitting facing forward, yes, yeah, she was on okay. the driver's side. Does she back in? Does she pull in? She pulls in. Okay, all right. So when she gets out, she's close enough to you, and that's when you motioned her over or called her over or said, hey, can I yeah, talk to you? Yeah, just said, hey, can I talk okay. to you? Were you by um, yourself? Yeah. Okay. Nobody's in the car with you. No. Was anybody in the car with her? No. Okay, all right. What was she wearing? Uh, her uniform. Uniform? Okay, yeah. alright. Uh, and then she comes over, she says, can I get in the car? If I say anything wrong, correct me. Okay. okay? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna repeat back, but if mm -hmm. I don't get something right, I need you to make sure I'm yeah. saying the right thing. Okay. Um, you say, hey, can I talk to you? She walks over, approaches on the driver's side. You in the car or out of the car then? In the car. Okay, you're sitting in the driver's yeah. seat? Okay. Um, and she, she asks, can she get in because she's just done heroin? Yeah. Okay. And then she... How does she do it? Does she shoot up, sm snort, smoke? Uh, she snorts it. Okay. And then she She's comes told me she shot up before, but yeah. uh, never in front of me. Okay. And then she comes and gets in the, in the car with you? Yeah. And you, is your car a two-door or a four-door? Four-door. Four-door. Does she get in the front seat or the back seat? She gets in the back, and I asked why she get, she got in the back. Okay. Um, She's like, I just don't want anybody to see me, you know. And where did you get into um, she said, you can come back here and we can talk. Okay. And so I got out and I got in the back seat. Okay, so you guys are both in the back yeah. seat now. Okay, gotcha. All right. All right, I, just, I wasn't sure. Um, and then how the, the conversation went, basically, you're telling her to leave you alone. Yeah. Stop harassing you or stop, to, why are you telling people that we're having sex and you guys, um, 
you don't want to you know, jeopardize your job. Along yeah, I just lines. told her, you know, especially since she was high, I was like, you know, it's, you know, we just don't need to have anything to do with each other. Okay. And uh, she just, she said, fuck you, you know, I'm going to keep doing this or whatever. Okay. So I got out and. And then you got back in and then what did you say to her? Um, I said, now, can you leave me alone? Like, I'm serious. I don't want to talk to you. And she said, fuck you. Why'd you do that? And I said, and she continued to say that she's going to do whatever she wants, okay. you know, and she'll say what she wants, no matter what. And okay. I knew in my mind it was because she was high. Yeah. So what did you say? But I, I got angry. Yeah, I got angry. I, I got, mean, I would too. Yeah, I got frustrated. Yeah. And I said, you know, and then now, she, you Go ahead. I'm no, sorry. no, go ahead. Um, we were told that that had happened before to her car. Have um, you heard that? I didn't heard that. You had not her heard car that. had been vandalized before. No. You have? No. Okay, so you, you didn't know about that. No. Okay. Same same deal. Okay. All right. Um, okay. What were you you were saying? Something about the um, you got back. You did you get back in the car? Yeah. Okay. And did you get in the front seat or the back seat? I got in the front seat. Okay. That time you got in the front yeah. seat. And where is she? She was in the back seat still. Okay. And at that point, I said, you know. Now leave me alone. She said. She responded. I said. Okay. And she said, "Fuck you," you know. I'll do what I want. And she got out. Mm -hmm. And it looked like she was either texting or calling somebody. Okay. Um, because as she started walking towards the, there's an entrance to bone to the plaza. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's closer towards two ninety five. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say she was walking along the edge of the plaza, but she was walking maybe towards this way. Mm -hmm. And I would say an older model Ford pickup, mm -hmm. green, Okay. Uh, drove past me and around, and she got in. Okay. So, um, she, had she, while you guys were in the car together, you guys are talking back and forth, she's not, on her, is she calling somebody while you guys are talking back and forth on the phone? Um, I didn't, she didn't call anybody, no. Okay. She had her phone in her hand. Yeah. Um. Okay. But I didn't. I don't think she texts anybody. Okay. So she gets out of the car with you, um, and starts walking in this direction. I was in the car. You're you're in the car, but she yeah. got out. Yeah. Uh, and now you're in the front seat. Yes. So she gets out of the back seat and begins walking toward in the direction of not necessarily paralleling um, San Jose, but she's walking towards 295 or down towards that entrance area. Yeah. Um, and then she's got her phone, and you said you thought she was calling somebody? Um, she was. She had it in her hand and looked like, I mean, I couldn't tell if she was texting or sure. not or anything. But she had her phone out. Yeah, she had her phone out and was looking at it, and then um, it looked like she was going to put it up to her ear, and then yeah. the green truck came around. Okay. And she How got long in. do you think... Um, it was between the time that she got out and started using her phone till that green truck pulled up? Um, maybe five minutes. Okay. So, wow. So, if she called somebody, they got there in five minutes to pick her up? Well, I mean, like I said, she, she, it looked like she was going to call somebody, and that's when the green truck came around okay. and she got in. Okay. So, she gets in the truck. What, what happened at that point? Um... They drove back around, kind of looped around a little bit. Which way did they drive? So, she was, say, like here. Mm -hmm. The green truck comes here. And then kind of just loops around. Mm -hmm. And it look, I guess they exited that way. And at that point, I left. They exited going which way? Down Santa? Um, towards what's it, Clare Lane. I uh, guess to leave the... Uh, so, they come out on the back side of this um, bank. Like this way? Yeah. Towards Claire and San Jose? Yeah. And then you pull out. Which way do you go? Um, I go around and then go out the same way. Same way? Yeah. Okay. And where do you go from there? From there, I go home. You just go straight home from So there. tell me your route and the way home that you went. Uh, 295 all the way to Beach Boulevard. Beach Boulevard to Grove Park. And then Grove Park. How long does that usually take you? Depending on traffic, obviously. The trap, I think it usually takes about 25 minutes or so. Okay. What happened to your neck? That was self inflicted, actually. Why? I just have been having kind of a hard time. Your neck? I couldn't. Yeah, I did. And. What did you use? A knife.
Savannah Gold's vehicle was discovered still sitting in the parking lot of the Bonefish Grill. A tire that she had replaced the day before had been slashed and her purse and other belongings were still in the front seat of the car. For three days, the community distributed missing posters and flyers hoping that someone would know what happened to Savannah Gold. Road Art himself was among the volunteers who helped pass out these flyers. Family members later say he seemed genuinely concerned for Gold's safety and he assisted them in searching for his own victim. Um, some time in July. You did that in July and it's still yeah. bloody? Well, you? it's, I kind of peeled a scab here and there at work, hitting okay. it on stuff like that. I peeled it last night working. Okay. Um, and it was coming off a little bit today, so I peeled that a little bit. All right, let me see. But this and this was the same night. This okay. one was just a lot worse. Yeah. And this one was. Okay. Um, and that was in July? Yeah. Okay. Um, like a few weeks back? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so who, who could you see who the person in the truck was? Um, the truck had tinted, fairly tinted windows. Okay. I saw um, a baseball cap. Yeah. Okay. You see a guy, girl, white, black? I couldn't really tell okay. if it was a guy or a girl. Okay. Um, I just remember seeing the truck drive and her get in. Yeah. Um, and obviously I'm sitting in front and the truck drives right past me. Yeah. And I saw a baseball cap through the passenger window. Okay. Um, but so it seemed like she knew the person. I mean, she got right in. Yeah. Have you had you ever um, seen that truck before? No. Never. Have you seen it since then? No. Did Why she did say? It? Okay. Well, did she say anything to you when she got out of the car, other than you know? She was just like, you? "Fuck you." Okay. You know, I'm gonna do what I want. And she doesn't say out. anything other than that. Okay. Lee, why didn't you mention this before since we've been looking for this girl? I mean, don't you think that information I mean, it definitely, important? it definitely does. Um, and I regret, obviously, not saying anything before. Um, I mean, I talked to uh, Chelsea, and you know, she said, you know, you need to tell them what you know mm -hmm. and everything When did like you talk that. to Chelsea? You uh, talked to Chelsea about this? Yes. Okay, when did you talk to her? Um, the day that it happened. Okay. Because, I mean... Her whole issue with me was me hanging out with Savannah. Sure. Prior. Yeah, yeah. And if Savannah's out of the picture, then you guys are can be free to have your relationship, be back together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she. I mean, look, Savannah's in the way, in essence, right? I mean, she she's kind of creeped in. I mean, she sounds like she's an ass. I mean, she's that way to you. If she's out there telling people you guys are having sex, and if you're not, or if you are. Um, then she's the one that's kind of pushing your buttons. She's pushing Chelsea's I mean, I just, buttons. I told Chelsea that I was going to tell her, you know, to leave me alone. You were going to tell stop. Savannah? Yeah. When did you tell Chelsea that? Um, I believe it was Tuesday Okay. night, maybe. Tuesday night? Yeah. Um, and you, how, how do you guys talk? Do you all Facebook, talk, text? Uh, text message. Okay. And do you have a Facebook? No. Okay. You, you don't have one at all? Um, I had one. Okay. I deactivated it maybe a month or two ago. Okay. Okay. It's still there, or you don't use it, or you actually I deactivated, deactivated the account. It. Okay. So it's not, you don't even have one that's out there then. Okay. No. Okay. Um, I did have one when Savannah and I first started talking. That okay. was kind of how we talked. You wait for you guys to talk without Chelsea knowing what was going on. Yeah. I'm not telling Chelsea. Yeah. I'm just no, I'm no, no. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, when I come up and talk to you yesterday, I'm not threatening. I'm just I'm talking to everybody up there. What? Why? Well, I just you know I, I freaked out to be honest with you. I mean, the, this girl was missing. Yes. Okay. But you know she's been missing. I mean, you you knew from you know from in essence from day one that she is um, that she's missing, and you. Um, you you freaked out that I mean you had I just to know I mean something. obviously you know I was the last one to see her so yeah. I was a little bit scared at that. Um, and How do you know you're, you you just said you weren't the last one to see her? You just said a, somebody in a truck. Well, I mean the last one to see her at Bonefish. Okay. That the last one she's heard from. Right. I had contact with that anybody knows of. Sure. Um, and you know I thought that I had a warrant out already. Okay. What's um, the warrant for? Uh, I didn't go to a court date for a ticket. Okay. Okay. So obviously but I, I didn't. I talked to you last night. Yeah. 
and I didn't have handcuffs, and I didn't wasn't threatening in any way. Definitely not. And but I, I mean, and I, and I left. So, I mean, what were you? You were worried. If you were worried you were going to get arrested, then that would have happened. Well, I mean, that's another reason that uh, you know, I Chelsea called me and I said, you know, I told him I didn't, you know, know anything. What do I do now? You know, I already. When did you talk already, to Chelsea about that? When did you when did you talk to her? Um, about that you talked. It had to have been after last night. So was yeah. it today? No, I didn't talk to her today. Okay, so I was up there talking to you last night, at like eleven o'clock. Yeah. So did you talk to her? No, I'm sorry. That? It was earlier in the day. I because obviously I told her what happened. On August fifth, two thousand seventeen. Lee Rodart confessed to the murder of Savannah Gold while being interrogated at the Jacksonville Police Department. He changed his story multiple times before finally revealing that he had killed Gold and disposed of her body in a nearby body of water. A dive team was called in to retrieve her remains in Westside Pond. Police were able to connect him to the case from security footage of his car. Additionally, Rodart had a noticeable wound on his neck that he claimed was self-inflicted, but authorities believe could have been from Gold during the struggle in the car. Uh, the day that it happened, mm -hmm. um, and told her that I was going to tell Savannah to leave me alone. Okay. Uh, the day before, mm -hmm. um, and after I told her, you know, what happened about me, you know, getting in the car with some guy. Yeah. Um, she, we talked a little bit just about, you know, how it's kind of crazy, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I said, well, you know, she hasn't hung out with the best of people in her past. Okay. Um, and she asked me if I knew who it was. I said no. Uh, just told her it was, you know, a green truck. Mm -hmm. um, and then everything happened and, you know, her mom and the police came up there mm -hmm. and everything like that. So we talked Thursday night. And she said, hey, you need to tell somebody. Okay. And I was like, I don't know what to do, you know. Mm. I'm scared. I, you know, I don't want to get in trouble for, you know, anything or have anything, you know, be a suspect or anything mm -hmm. like that, which, I mean, obviously wasn't the right decision to make. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because now, yeah, obviously, I mean, we're it, find it, it out looks so. obviously. Yeah, we should have gotten uh, three yeah. days ahead. Obviously, this. obviously, now it looks. So, um, so you're saying that there's a, a green, what kind of truck was it? It was. It looked like a Ford, like a mid '90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was a two door, maybe the one with the little third door that you open from the side. Okay. Um, well, the good thing about that is um, we should be able to verify all of that, all of those kind of things. That that, that won't be a problem at all. Um, yeah, I'm just. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, so you said that you told her. That you had talked to us, but I, I don't think that that could chronologically. I don't think that could match. No, up. Okay. we we talked Thursday. Okay, and not last night. No, we talked. or we, this. We we talked Thursday. Okay, after like uh, her mom and everything was on news. Yeah, um, she called me and was like, "Hey, you know, everything's all over the news. Uh, you need to you need to tell somebody." You know, she said, "Call the hotline." Or something like that. Did you call the hotline? Um, I told her I did, just because I had I wasn't I was scared to call that night. So, but did you ever call the hotline? No. So this you haven't told anyone yet of this, other no, than Chelsea's Chelsea. the only person that okay. knows. Okay. Um, you just because I felt like I could, you know, I've. Did you want to be talk? truthful? So after, how'd that conversation go with you and Chelsea? Um, she just she kept right. asking me, you know, it's like, what happened? Mm -hmm. You know, what happened? And I would tell her, and she said it's crazy. Um, and then she told me that, you know, I need to yeah. call somebody and let them know that I was. Talk to her Wednesday okay. um, before the news that she went missing. Yeah, and I said I would. Okay, and I didn't. How'd that? How'd, how'd the conversation end with you guys? She was. 
she told me she basically said that she's not going to, you know, she doesn't want to associate with me because I talk to Savannah on Wednesday. It's you, essentially you had already told of, her you were going to do that. Yeah. Okay, so. Here. You see, the thing with me and Chelsea would argue all the time about yeah. me but, not telling Savannah. To cut it off or yeah, whatever. Yeah. But you go up and you meet. Chelsea knows that you're going to go meet Savannah Wednesday afternoon. Yes. She knows that. Um, afterwards, do you guys talk about how that conversation went? Yes. Okay. So you got. So she knows how the conversation ended. Yes. And you told her that night, Wednesday night, about the truck and about her. Um, is there? So you just called her and told her. No, like we you, we spoke first via text. Okay. Um, so you text her from your phone. Yes. That so that's on your phone? Yes. Okay, so that text message is on your phone? No. Why not? You know, they said Savannah was missing because mm -hmm. I freaked out. I was like, holy crap. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds like. Which is, sounds I mean, crazy. Which is. So you. I mean, obviously, me sending a picture of one of the things that they pointed out on yeah. the news kind of scared me. Sure. So. Absolutely. Um, so how, how, do you guys get together, or y'all talk anymore Wednesday night? How, do you have? Uh, does she do a follow up with you? How the conversation go? How how the rest of Wednesday go? Um, we she called me on my way home. Okay. Um, and you know, asked where I was. When I told her I was like pulling my neighborhood. Um, and then we just talked about the situation. She asked what I said to Savannah. Yeah. What Savannah said to me, and you know. And she asked why, she because she was texting me while me and Savannah were talking, okay. and I didn't reply because me we were talking, yeah. and you know, I was we were going back and forth, so mm -hmm. uh, I didn't text her back, and I told her, you know, I'm not ignoring you. We were talking, and then I, so she called me and asked me what I was doing. I said I'm in my neighborhood, about to go home. Uh, went home. Uh, we text a little bit more here and there. She asked me what I was doing, told her I was eating. Uh, I sent a picture of her after I got a shower because she was like, oh, I haven't got any pics or this and that. So uh, as I was getting out the shower, I got the text message and I texted her a picture of me getting out the shower uh, because she said she didn't believe I was home okay. or something like that. Um, so I sent her a picture and other than that, I hung out at the house. Okay. By yourself? No, I have a roommate. Okay. What's his name? Aaron. A A R O N. Okay. So Beiger. B I E G E R. B I E G E R. Yeah, he's um. P or B? B. B. Okay. Okay. He's what? Sorry. He's who I moved in with. Okay. So Wednesday night over the house, it's you and Aaron. Yeah. Okay. 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 Was yeah. Aaron there when you got home? No. Which time did he get home? Uh. 11 ish. Okay. A little bit after. But before that, you just hung out at the house by yourself at 8? Um, I ate some dinner, took a shower. Chelsea actually came over Wednesday night, okay. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And what'd y'all do? Uh, just hung out, watched movies, drank a couple beers. Okay. Um, so where, where, when she's in the car, what is she, does she say to you about what her plans are? So she's scheduled to work that night. Mm -hmm. So she's going to work? She didn't talk about, uh, I mean, I assumed she was going to work. Mm -hmm. um, she was in her uniform. Um, but she didn't say, when she got out of the car, she didn't say anything mm -hmm. after she got out of the car. When she gets in that truck, she, let's be honest, let's, we won't even call her she, was Savannah. Okay, um, Savannah, um, again with this picture, if we're using it in the same place, they, you, from where your drawing was, they drove over here. You're here, and you, they drive out over here. Do they stop? Does she get out and go into work? Does, does the um, truck keep going? I didn't see once they turned the corner past the ATM. Mm -hmm. Once she got in and they left, I left you because left. I just... Did you run you know, into them on the road anywhere? 
No. Okay. Did she call you later on or text you later on? Savannah. Mm -hmm. When Savannah Gold's body was recovered, it was difficult to determine her cause of death. 75% of her body had been burned, and officials declared her manner of death as violent homicide, though they could not determine exactly how she died. It is believed that Gold's body was burned in Rodart's backyard and then wrapped in plastic, a blanket, and duct tape before being thrown in a nearby pond. No other contact with her? No. So where's Savannah right now? I don't know. Where would I find her? I don't know. That's my, my prime objective is to find her. Definitely. I think time's running out on her. And I think that... I mean, I... I've... I should have said something to you yeah. guys when I talked. Oh, yeah, I yeah, should have said should've. something Wednesday I think, or Thursday when it was brought in. So tell me attention. how I go from nice guy, never met you. Um, you seem like a nice guy. I come up and talk to you uh, again out of you. You know, you agreed that there was nothing threatening or anything about our conversation. Just asking you for some, some basic, simple things. We, we talked for just a few minutes. And you um, didn't tell me. This story. I'm not going to say the truth because um, I, I think there's holes in this story too. Okay. Um, so you don't tell me this story. And then today we're talking again because I brought you down to talk to you because I found holes in, in that story that didn't match up. And now you're telling me another story that there's holes in this story that does not match up. So where where's Savannah? I don't know. Where else? Why were you being hesitant about Chelsea being at your house? You first said that you uh, ate by yourself, you yes. ate alone. Yes. And then I ate dinner alone, yes. Right, but that wasn't that's not true either, because you ordered Papa John's. Yeah. I for I, Chelsea. I ate corn dogs earlier in the evening. And, and when Chelsea couldn't. got there, she was hungry. Right, but you said so you I said clearly I, said yeah. you were alone. When I ate the corn dogs, yeah. Okay. Well, you know what I'm I saying. remember specifically texting Chelsea, I'm eating corn dogs. And all that's on your phone? No. Why would so, you delete all that? Just a conversation with you and Chelsea, you would delete about I'm having corn dogs? That text might be on there. Okay. But she, once we got to talking about, you know, me going up to Bonefish and everything like yeah, that, yeah. Uh, Chelsea said, you know, don't involve me. Does Chelsea you believe know. you? She... I don't know. Okay. Um, just so you know, Kelly thinks you're bullshit. Okay. Because we've talked. We've talked a lot. Yeah. Before. So. And, and, and I mean, that's about the gist of you know, Chelsea's attitude towards me for the most part for the past months. You know, okay. Ever since me and Savannah. Is that because first, you're a liar? I mean, to her, like in I the mean, past. That's pretty much what she labels me as. Yeah. Do you, because do you I, lie? Not about, ever, no. I mean, obviously, I lied to her about okay. hanging out with Savannah and stuff. And you like lied that. to me about Savannah. Yes, okay. So, I mean, I, I just, I'm not trying to say anything else. No, I understand. Here's, I'm just laying out a, a facts here. I want, I want to find this girl. I, I need to find her. I understand. Um, and here's a couple reasons I need to find her. One is, um, I'm hoping that, that she's still alive. Um, and, and that's really, I, I really do, I'm holding out for that. Um, and if she's not alive, and I think she and her family are, are, are due that knowledge. I think closure. that's. I, I think they need some closure um, because I think the reality is, is if somebody's, you know, dead somewhere, a, a parent would want to know. I, I think if you do, you have kids. No. Okay. So one day when you have kids, you the uncertainty is is what, whatever kind of a person she is, and I'm not about to say what kind of a person she is. Um, because that, I, I'm not making any judgments. I'm saying that this human being is, if she's alive, then I, I want to find her. I, I need to make sure she's okay because several days now she hasn't been around. Some there, Things happen to the human body, and people can't stand um, a, a lot of things that can transpire. But the other thing is, if she's not, this family deserves better than this. This family deserves better than somebody who works with her and who's got knowledge and won't tell the police because they're worried about their own ass. Because that's pretty I, that's, that's pretty cheap. I'm going to be honest with you. And I agree, your, I your feelings in it, I don't, I don't really care about your feelings. What I care about is finding her. So where is she? I don't know where she is. Where is Savannah? I don't know. 
I need to know where Savannah is. So I, I don't know where know. she is. You don't know because you had something done with her and you weren't involved in that part? No. I, I don't know. Tell me something. What can I work with? I told you the last time I saw her. That's not true because we have proof. We have, we have proof. And that's why we're sitting here, Lee. At this point, we need this for her. I mean, I look at that little girl and I think of my little girl. My little girl who's her age. That's who I think about. That was my little girl. I couldn't imagine. I don't care what she said about you or whatever, but my little girl is that age. Uh, maybe, maybe and you're not telling the truth. Maybe something gets out of hand in the car. I didn't do anything. Okay, you didn't uh, okay. do anything, but she okay. was in your car. She never got out of your car. She, she never got, got out of your car, Lee. We, we're not saying that you did anything. I'm trying to find her. I didn't say you I did don't know anything. Where she is. Well, we can prove that you left with her in the car. So please, do 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 everybody do a favor and just tell us. Where where is she? You you got to be able to to be able to separate. We're not sitting here saying you did anything to her. I, I don't know. She's on drugs. I, maybe she she passed. I don't I don't know. I, I'm not in that car with you guys. I know that she's in that car with you. I have proof of all of this. Okay, let me ask you, Lee. Then you tell us now if you're if you're being an honest man. Are you being honest? Yes. Okay. Well, let's start being honest. She never got out of your back seat, Lee. During the March 2021 trial. Rodart claimed he killed Gold by accident after she had attacked him and he was forced to hold her back. The prosecution argued against this self-defense justification, pointing to the slashing of the tire, burning of the body, and other suspicious behavior as evidence of premeditation. She never got out of your, your back seat. Video cameras don't lie. Lee. How do you know? How do you, how do you think I know this information, Lee? I wasn't there, but a video camera caught it. Tell me what happened. I don't know. What? How did? How? What happened to her? Was it an overdose? Is that what happened? I, I don't know. I'm not in the car with you guys. You just said she was in your car and she had Im admittedly had done heroin. A body's overdose all the time. Is that what happens? Does she overdose? Okay. Well, tell us when you left with her in the car. Is that is what is shown? We can't make up that. We can't falsify a video camera, Lee. I'm not lying to you because you know I'm telling the truth because you know that's what's on the video. How else would I know that? I don't unless I have the video. Where did you go with her? I didn't go anywhere with you her. You did. No. You did. So the video camera's lying? I don't know this. I mean. Well, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I'm not lying to you. I'm not making that up. That's why I'm so passionate about this. This is someone's child. You might not have kids, but damn it, is she someone's kid? It's not fair to her that. mom with stage four cancer. Once all she wants to know is where her daughter is. But I have this man sitting over here, a 28 year old man, that first says, You haven't seen her. You didn't see her that day. So now the roles have reversed a little bit because we've been doing our background, okay? And now you're saying that she was sitting in your car, which all lines up with the video, actually. I'm glad that you said you got in the back seat with her. All that lines up. But you know what doesn't line up? So that passenger door comes open and shuts, comes open and shuts. She never gets out of that car. And you drive off. She never gets out of that car. There is no green truck. And that's not right to her. We're fact finders, Lee. I don't have anything personal against you. No, no, not at all. I mean, it's it's. it's We're over. just fact just finders. Tell us We're what just happened. doing Where our is job. She? No, no, no. Where did you go with her? Where did you go with her, Lee? Be a human. You're a human. You're a man. Where did you go with her? I know you're not that cruel inside. Seriously, where did you go with her? Maybe you, you maybe you don't know where she is now. Where did you go? With her? Please, I'm begging you, Lee. Please, please tell us. Please don't make us waste any more of our time. Just tell us. Please tell us. Please, I'm begging you. I know you're not evil. Just tell us where she is. 
I'm begging you, please. Please. Can you please just tell me? You do know. Is that what, how you want it? people to think? During the trial, Rodart pleaded not guilty, explaining that the altercation occurred after discussing his long-term girlfriend, Chelsea, who he'd been cheating on with Gold off and on for about eight months. After a shouting match, he says Gold lunged at him and he was forced to hold her neck back, which is when he heard something pop and knew she was dead. I know you're not an evil person. I don't see that in you. I don't see that in your history. I don't hear those things about you at work. Please tell us where you went with her. She never got out of your car. Please tell us, please, please. I'm begging you. For her family. Please, please. She didn't get out of your car. And you know that, obviously. I'm begging you. Is that human? I don't know. You do like this? I, I, please, you know. Lee, just please, please don't make us do this any longer. Well, yeah, for her, for her, for her family. Can you just, just tell us where. Can you just tell us? Where, where did you go? Where did you go with her then? Can you at least tell us that? At least tell us that part. Where did you go with her afterwards? She didn't get out of your car, and, and you know that, obviously, because yeah, I know we that. Do. That's why we were here. Just tell us where. Where did you go with her? Tell us that. At least point us in that direction. I owe her family. We've been no one's, uh, We're not saying anything that you intentionally did anything. Just tell us where you went. Please. Lee, it's not You're doing right. great. I mean, you told you you already told us everything we already know. It's not right, Lee. This isn't right for her family or for anybody. No one should have to go through this. I'm just, I'm just human like you are. She's human. Her family. Everybody has feelings. Please. Now's, now's the time to tell us, because I don't think you're any kind of evil person. Yeah. And I feel like you are going to tell us the truth. I, I do believe that. I do believe you're going to tell us the truth, because I believe that you do have a conscience. Now's the time. Please. That's all we're asking, it's just where, where'd you guys go? I, I think you're a good man. I think you want to do the right thing. When y'all left out of there, you went down Clear Lane, you made a left from San Jose, about to 295, and you get up on 295. Okay. Where else did you go before you went home? I mean, I know you eventually went home. But I didn't go anywhere. I went straight home. Okay, so what did y'all do when you got home? Savannah was with you. She was with you. And that's okay at that point, but I don't even know what... Where, where did she go from there? Is she still at your house? No. Okay. Is she still in your car? No. Okay. Well, then, then where is she? I don't know where she is. Okay, then where did you last drop her off at? I didn't drop her off. Okay, well then tell me. What happened? Where did you guys go? We went to my house. Okay. We did some jokes. Okay. Hung out for a little. And then she said she was going to catch an Uber home. Okay. And did she call an Uber? She pulled her phone out. Looked like she was using it. I wasn't hovering over her. I was pretty high. So, I mean, I wasn't. She told me she was leaving. She walked out the door. What was going on in and the back seat? 
What was going on in the back seat? For the doors to be kicked open. She kicked open that door three times, Lee. She kicked it. We saw it. And you know, and you know I'm not making it up because I wouldn't know this because I wasn't there. I would never know this unless we had video of it, correct? Yes, correct. I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just a fact finder. I'm not going to lie to you. That door kicked over three times. Obviously something went on in that back seat. Talk, tell me about that. What happened in the back seat? Did she get mad at you? Well, we've had arguments plenty of times where she says she doesn't care what happens or anything like that. But let's be honest. No one's going to go with some man willingly after all that. No, one, no one's going to do it. Please tell me where Savannah is. No. You do know. You do know, Lee. And right now is the time. You're so close, and I know, I know you're going to tell me. I know you are, because I just, I just know you are. Because I know you want to do the right thing, but you're scared to do the right thing. I, I get it. Yeah. I do. I'm not, I'm not. Can you just tell me what I'm being charged with, please? Yes. I, I would, I want to. I don't know yet, but at least I do know that you're, you have the KPS out for your arrest for the, for the PWS. Know. We found that. For what? The DWLS, I think. Yeah. No. I. Where, where's Savannah? So what am I being charged with now? I. Driving while suspended license? I don't know yet. Yeah. I gotta talk to the attorney that's sitting but, out there watching this interview. Where's Savannah? I don't know. You do know. So you're gonna make me and our team and this whole entire sheriff's office and every person in the community to get out there after, you know, we, after they know the truth of who she left with and sees the struggle in the backseat of your car. And you're going to make all of us go and search Jacksonville for her when you could just easily tell me where she is? But is that what we're going to put think, everybody think, through? Think about this. All right. Sometimes people do wrong things, right? Some people make mistakes. It's what you do afterwards. I got a family that needs closure. They are now coming to the reality that she's no longer with us. I need closure for them. When stuff gets out that you guys left and all that together and all that stuff, so you want people to remember you as a guy who said, "Okay, look, I'm going to do the right thing," or do you want your family and everybody else to think that you're some? evil, heartless person who won't tell us where she is. Why would you put your family and her family through all that? I don't think you're that kind of guy. I don't think you're evil. Something got out of hand. I get it. But what do you do after that? Here's what you do. You do the right thing now. Just tell us where she is. Closure for her family. Lee, we understand. Listen, we understand. We're not trying to hinge you up on anything, man. I'm telling you, I'm thinking about this girl and her family. And your family. She was... Sir. Please tell me where to go find her. That's how people remember you. You can work with that. What? You gotta oh, do the right thing now. You can do this. You can do the right thing. Rodart was ultimately found guilty of second degree murder and sentenced to 40 years in prison. He received this verdict as part of a plea deal, which allowed him to take a reduced sentence if he changed his plea to guilty. Lee Rodart is 31 years old and is serving his 40-year sentence in a Florida prison. He will be 71 at the time of his release.